Brawly Christian Academy. Welcome back to another episode of what is the episode of BCA Chapel. That's right. So if you have your Bible, get it out, open it up. We have a interesting chapel today. Well, they're always interesting, aren't they? But this one's even more different than the rest of them. Because guess where we're going to be at? We're going to the farm. Welcome, Mr. Brent. Well, good morning BCA and uh, wish again we could be there in person but you know the neat part about this is it gives us the ability for some of us to get kind of creative so today I'm out here at Brant Beef feedlot and I have a unique message I think but before I'd like to kind of give a, a foundation before we get into uh, the scriptures of it I know you've uh, heard me preach on Psalms 1 before, but I'm going to take another aspect and maybe bring a good logical, visual way for us to understand um, today's message. But let us pray first. Uh, Father in heaven, we just do ask that you would be glorified. We pray that your word would uh, uh, fall deeply and, and be um, used within BCA to help kids grow deeper in their walk with you, or maybe even today, someone in this room, in the rooms that will hear this message, will say, I need Christ, for I want to have his best in my life. We ask this in Jesus' holy name, amen. As you can see, and you might be already hearing, that uh, we are at, again, like I said, a feedlot, and, and let me just kind of pan around here so you guys can see that there is a whole bunch of steers out here. And in the background back there, I think, can we see it? Yeah, you see the big feedlot. And there's some other pictures that I believe uh, Brother Tony will bring in the background as I give this message. As I, you saw in the background there, and as maybe one would be pulled up of the feed mill. In the feed mill, there's corn, there's alfalfa, there's minerals and minor nutrients that are steamed and blended and, uh, and all done through a computer and a high-tech uh, high type of way of creating the best feed for these steers. Then you also saw how the feed trucks that I am hopefully are showing up on the screen behind me uh, have these computers on board and they measure and they meter out exactly the amounts for each one of the pins. And then there's inside there the probably the most, um, how would you put it, the most important, in a sense, are the drivers. In fact, I'm going to switch over so you guys can see this. There is the feed truck going by. <laughs> guys waving at you. Hopefully you guys can see that. Anyhow, so the guy, the driver inside is probably one of the most important guys in the seat other than all the other guys making the feed and the computers and ordering all the materials in but see when they come up they will look at the troughs and when they look at the troughs they will determine on the computerized amount of what should go in if it needs a little bit more feed or a little less feed depending on how these steers are eating through that day so i think of how that just real quick how that kind of likens itself to the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, uh, taking uh, notice of what do we need? You know, how much, how much can we truly take in and absorb and not waste it? And uh, the other thing is, if he sees that the food is being wasted or, or too much feed, then he'll, he'll back off the computer because you, you can have too much and it becomes smelly and the steers won't eat it. And that kind of interesting that, that, you know, sometimes we think, and we hear people, I've read the Bible in one year. Well, that's good. I think that's profitable. 
but sometimes maybe we're just reading it, taking too much in and it's not doing anything and it may just be hindering ourselves rather than getting into how um, we will talk about this message. In a steer, it first takes, it chews and it gets it moist and then it swallows it. And the, and the food goes into a, a, an area called the rumen. And there it's digested down and broken down a little bit. But then there's been this unique way of allowing this food to come back up and the, and the cows will, or the steers will cheer, chew on it. And they call chewing the cud. And they sit there and they'll chew on it and then they swallow it back down. And it goes down into a place called um, the omassum. Omassum. And here this, this actually part of the stomach squeezes out more and more of the nutrients. And then from there it goes to the obomassum, obomassum of the stomach where then it's even digested even more. Isn't that unique of how that God creating them, creating these great uh, feeding machines, these great steaks, um, great carne asada, filet mignon, ribeyes, uh, rack of ribs all this starts by how the stomach digests and there's four of stomachs in a sense that digest this to give them the best nutrients so that they can give us the best food product so that being said I want to get into the message now um, in Psalms chapter 1 2 and 3 it says but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night he is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and all that he does he prospers Psalms 119 11 through 17 says this I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you blessed are you O Lord teach me your statutes with my lips, I declare all the ordinance of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servants so that I may live and observe your word. Isn't that interesting? And, and you think about that word meditate. Right? Psalms 19.14 says this, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In 1 Timothy 4.11-16 it says, These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity until I arrive. Give attention to the public reading of scripture to exhort and to teaching. Do not neglect the gifts that is in you which, you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying of the hands by the counsel of the elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all, my, all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourselves and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Isn't that interesting? And as Paul is giving this exhortation to Timothy, I'm giving this exhortation to you, no matter how young, no matter if you're a teenager listening to this. You have been designed and you have been purposed. You have been knit together to do one thing, to look into the, the, the words of God, to meditate on it, to chew the cud as it is, to understand it. And in understanding, the richness of all that nutrients will come and you would be flavored in such a way that you could be used to tell your friends, to tell your parents, to tell your relatives, to tell someone even at Walmart that God loves them. That God loves them. Because isn't that what the, the, the gospel is? That God had so much love for mankind that he came and he, 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 he came through his son. His son came and revealed his wonderful works. His son came showing that he was God in the flesh, that God wanted to have a relationship with all people, all, all people that would put their trust in Christ. That, that this relationship showed how, how sad it was, how, how terrible it was that the son, this perfect son, went to the cross in obedience, serving and, and being glorified in the sense as he listened to the Father, to the obedience even to the cross, even to death. 
But oh, even more so, when he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Realizing that we have done things in the past, but we can be forgiven to the uttermost through that of Christ Jesus. Oh, but it didn't stop there, did it? No, he, he, he conquered death, right? He, he, he raised from death, right? And he didn't just go somewhere and, and sit down. No, he went to the throne room. No man has ever gone to be able to go to the throne except for that of Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? So I wonder, have you taken time to really study God's Word? Not just read it, to but study it. To chew on it, as I think you will see in different accounts of pictures that I've given Tony. There's a part where you can see these cows are just sitting down and they're just chewing. They're meditating on that, on that, that regurgitated food, that the Word of God. We will read it, but then we bring it back up and to really study it. In fact, there's a, a saying in, in, the, in the industry that uh, a, a cud chewing steer indicates a healthy steer. That if you see, um, and I showed a picture of some younger ones uh, laying down, or maybe it's a video, I forget, but they're laying down, they're also sitting there. I wish, I was kind of hoping the video could catch it, and they're just chewing, enjoying that food. But think of all the preparation. Think of all the men that it that took to get that food into the pen. Think of all the different accounts in Scripture so that we could have this Bible, so that we might know, that we know that we are saved and saved to the uttermost. Kids, I, I pray. I pray that God's Word's important to you. That you're not just waiting for Monday or Tuesday or... Wednesday to hear the message at school, but you're allowing the message to dwell and to permeate and to take, take, take hold of your hearts, giving you that nutrient of God's living word so that you would be strong and used mightily by him. Now you saw different steers that were not of great size, but here right behind me, as they sat here and listened to the word, are the end result. They're big, they're ready, they're going to the market to have food for us. <laughs> but it took a while to get to there. But it took proper feeding, proper input to get them to be ready for what they were designed by God to be food for us. So anyhow, I hope you'd enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. And I'm just gonna leave with uh, one more scripture. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate. You shall be constantly in it, is what it's saying. Day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall be successful. Isn't that a wonderful thing? If we want to be successful, then we put our whole heart, first and foremost, in understanding the words that God has given to us. And if we do that, then he has said he will make us prosperous and we will be successful in all we do. God bless you kids and young teenagers. May the love of the Lord dwell upon us richly. In his name we pray. This old guy came in as a joke. 
this. Look at this guy. Look at the old teeth in there. Yeah, hi there. Anyhow. Look at that. Think of how Adam, he got to name this guy. Thought. <laughs> Get those old teeth. Hey there. How are you? Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's chapel. Of course, like always, it's a blessing to have our speakers come in. That was a unique chapel, wasn't it? I told you it was going to be unique. So, um, just a couple of things. February is almost over, guys. February is gone. We're going to be in March next week. And, man, this month has gone by so quickly. You're going to be getting your progress report. So, parents, look out for that progress report. Make sure you check it out. You know, consequence award, consequence award. You know, praise your students. They try hard here. All of them do well. Um, everybody struggles in their own unique way. But again, we want to give them uh, your feedback so that they could help themselves to do better and improve. Right? Amen. Thank you guys for participating in the popcorn sales. You know, I wasn't able to order any popcorn. Nobody asked me to buy popcorn. And I was really looking forward to buying popcorn, but I guess I, guess I don't get any popcorn this time. You know, next week we have a PTO meeting as well. So next Thursday we'll have a PTO Zoom meeting. Uh, please try to make these. And, you know, whenever you get a chance, you know, thank the PTO board members. I mean, they have done such a fantastic job. Whenever there's something extra, the PTO is always involved. You know, like the Valentine's Grams, the PTO that put them together. You know, this is a lot of work. And, you know, these are people with full-time responsibilities as parents, and yet they make time to invest themselves in the school. So thank them. Um, they try to make the school special for your child and for the school in general. So um, we're just so grateful for them and all the work they do. So thank you, PTO members. We appreciate you. Enrollment begins next month. I talked about it last week. But remember, you can have your days to enroll your student. You have priority days, which are for currently enrolled students only. So find your day that's your priority and ensure you enroll. Remember, the window is between 830 and 315. No, before, not after, so make sure you are enrolling during that time. Uh, we're probably going to give out packets to our currently enrolled students to fill out and, and submit it uh, later, but you are going to have to come into the office to make the payment, so we can give you a receipt. We don't want money circulating in the backpacks of these students. That never goes well, and um, you know if they lose it or whatever, it's just going to be problematic. So do not send money with your kids. Make sure to come to the office and submit that payment in person, or you can call and submit it uh, through credit card on the, on the phone or um, you know, make arrangements that way. But uh, make sure that you do enroll during that day because, again, it's just one day. If you don't enroll, remember, starting on the 27th of March, you'll be able to enroll early, but it leaves that window open to anybody else. So it's first come, first serve. Okay? And we are excited for Broadway Christian Academy. We're going to be doing some great things this coming year. We want to add more things. Uh, you know, we took it very carefully this year, and rightfully so. We should be we should be taking all these precautions. Next year, we're going to be trying to open up a little bit more to more events. You know, more field trips and things of that nature. Um, you know, we want to still provide in-person learning as we have been this year, um, but we want to supplement it with other things. And it's difficult because we can't get anybody outside to come in. But we are going to try to make some arrangements for that to happen in a safe way. So keep us in prayer as we try to make this school um, as beneficial and as full as possible for these students, given our circumstances. So I appreciate all the prayers of parents and those supporters out there have given us. And we love you for it. Amen. So I think that's all I have. Um, enjoy your guys' weekend. And uh, I will see you all next week. So I didn't say whose turn was it last week. Whose turn was it? Was it fourth grade? No, fourth grade always yells. And that's good. You guys know that fourth grade yells all the time. They always do. Fifth grade? Uh, did I say fifth grade? I don't know. I know sixth grade. I haven't done sixth grade yet. So we'll do sixth grade, all right? So sixth grade, let's hear it. Christ leads the way. You are dismissed. Christ leads the way. Somebody didn't say it. <laughs>